that even mean? Hey there, for? YouTube. I'm back again today for another How to Play video, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Beat That, the Bonkers Battle of Wacky Challenges. This is for two to eight players, taking 40 to 90 minutes to play. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is take all the cards, mix them up as best you can, and then put them into the center. Next, you're going to make sure that everyone has exactly 10 tokens. Five blue tokens, three orange tokens, and two yellow tokens. So right now, we have a three-player game set up. Next, you're going to take all the other components and just set them off to the side where you can reach them easily because you'll need them during the challenges. All right, so just set these all over here. Next, what you're going to do is you are going to all roll the dice, and the person who gets the highest roll is going to go first. If you get a tie, then roll off. And the person who had... The highest die roll is then going to grab the top card of the deck and then read it out loud. So this is a blink off. This is a battle royale challenge. And the text on the card will tell you exactly what to do. Three, two, one, go. The last player to blink is the winner. Blowing is allowed. All players must start with their eyes open. So in a battle royale challenge, everyone is going to be competing against everyone else. So there will be only one winner. Knowing that, all players are now going to choose how much they would like to bid on this particular round. You can only bid one chip per round because you're going to be playing 10 rounds. So every round, each player is then going to secretly pick one of their tokens that they are going to bet. And this is a big decision because if you are correct, then you will bank those points into its own separate pile. And that pile will represent the number of victory points you have at the end of 10 rounds. Now, if you're incorrect, then the token goes back into the box. And this information is secret until everyone's ready. So let's just say that everyone has their hands out over their tokens... And we'd all say reveal, and this player right here is wagering five tokens, this player is wagering one token, and this player is wagering one token. Now in a battle royale, everyone competes against each other. However, in other competitions, you will take turns doing the challenge, and you'll always start with whoever drew and read the card out loud. So right now, these three players would all have a stare off. Let's pretend that this player won, so they put this one into their score pile over here, and then these two chips are just gone. And you can put the challenge card back in the box. So after everyone has completed the challenge, the next player in clockwise order will read a card out loud and you'll rinse, wash, and repeat. But now let's talk about the three other types of challenges that you're going to see in the game, which are solo, duel, and buddy up. So we're going to talk about solo first. Solo challenges are just like normal. Someone will flip it over, read it out loud. People will secretly place their wagers, reveal, and then starting with the player who flipped over the card, one person at a time will try to complete the challenge. If you're successful, then you get to bank whatever chip you wagered into your victory point pile. And if you're unsuccessful, then the chip goes out of the game. Once everyone has had an opportunity to complete the solo challenge, move on to the next player, who's ready to start the new round. Now, duel and buddy up work slightly different. In a duel challenge, you will be competing against one other person. And in a buddy up challenge, you will be working with one other person. However, on these challenges, once someone has read these aloud, you don't immediately bid like normal. What you do is, starting with the first player who read out the card, they are going to pick one other player at the table to be their buddy-up or dual partner. Once they've picked that person, it then goes to the next player, if they were not picked, who does the same thing and picks out another player who has not been picked to be their buddy-up or dual partner. And you'll go around the table doing this until everyone has a partner. Once everyone has a partner, now you'll secretly place your bid and reveal it at the same time. And for buddy up challenges, you do not have to pick the same token as your partner. This would be totally fine if these were partners and these are the tokens they chose. Now, if there is an odd number of players during a buddy up or dual challenges, the rules are tweaked because one player inevitably will not get picked and they will be the odd person out. That's fine. What's going to happen is they won't place a bid. They will watch everyone else perform the challenge and then they get to choose their partner after watching everyone else complete the challenge. So for instance, if there was a dual challenge, the odd person out would get to see who is the worst player at the challenge and then could go against them. Now the player who was chosen as the odd person's partner wins or loses their token based on the outcome of their second attempt at the challenge, not their first attempt. So let's say, for instance, you lost at your first duel, and then the odd person picks you in the duel, but you win? Well, guess what? You bank your chip. Likewise, if you won the first time at the challenge, and then the odd person out challenges you and you lose, you lose your chip. Anywho, you're going to continue to do this over the course of 10 rounds, and whoever has the most points banked up at the end of the game wins. And you'll know the game is over because everyone will have bet all their chips. Now, in the event of a tie, play on using only solo challenge cards until there is only one winner. 
What I think this means is any players who are tied for the lead at the end of 10 rounds are then going to draw a solo challenge and then do it. If there's only one person that's left being the winner, then they win. So for instance, if there was a three-way tie, the three players would do this solo challenge, and if only two people competed it, then those two people would go on to another solo challenge until there's only one person left. But I'm not 100% sure because the rule booklet doesn't really tell you how the tiebreaker works. Last but not least, if you're playing with only two players, skip the buddy-up cards, but play as normal. And that's Beat That, the Bonkers Battle of Wacky Challenges. If this helped you out, please consider giving a thumbs up. Also in the comments below, let me know where in the world I helped you out at. And consider subscribing or supporting the Patreon as I teach new games all the time. But go have some fun and thanks this for This video time. is brought to you by all of my amazing Patreon supporters. And I would love it if you would join their ranks and have your name immortalized in the end of many of my videos for the end of time. But consider for only a dollar a month. And as always, thanks for stopping by.